Greetings to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Friends, this day, it is a wonderful day. And uh, as we come together once again to celebrate God and His faithfulness, we have a very good friend of ours, Solomon. His name is C.P. Solomon to be more uh, right. He is an income tax officer by profession. A dear brother who loves the Lord and who serves the Lord. So we will hear about his life story today. Solomon, we thank you so much for uh, being a part of this Kingdom People program today. Lambert and I are just happy to have you here today. It's my pleasure too. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Solomon, uh, would you share a little about your background? Yeah. And your uh, spiritual upbringing and how yeah. you came to know the yeah. Lord. So actually, you can say that uh, I, I was born in a typical Indian, South Indian family in the sense that my mom was one who had tasted the Lord so much, she lived it off and we could just see the tangible thing in her in all aspects of our life. And we had a dad who was just the opposite. <laughs> I mean, uh, people uh, who live in uh, the remote South Indian part, like this, beyond Madurai part, and into that uh, remote village. Okay. I mean, the people are much used to that, to that place would know mm -hmm. how the men would be. Okay. Highly egoistic. I'm not here to downright my dad or anything, mm -hmm. but uh, that was, like, we could, as a small kid, I could see that thing ingrained in them, mm -hmm. that male ego, or I don't know whatever it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, extremely tough and rude to my mom mm. and uh, my mom was holding a good position in those days in the sense that she was a senior professor of English in a reputed college in Coimbatore, in a very reputed college in Coimbatore mm. and uh, I, I What was her name? Uh, Lily. Uh, my mom's uh, name was Lily okay. and my dad was uh, working in the airport as a junior level uh, assistant or executive something like that mm -hmm. and uh, we just I could as a small boy I could see the anger and the violence my dad only used to continuously unleash at my mom mm -hmm. and uh, we lived in an area I still remember that uh, second standard and first standard area that uh, I mean all those roles also should be and I, I, I used to see how the women used to even retaliate against the uh, much sober husbands but here was a case where, uh, even though my mom was receiving all the uh, abuse, uh, she wasn't at all retaliating. Okay. And uh, I still, I vividly remember when I was a uh, little above, like my kid's age of third standard and all, I asked my mom, why are you keeping quiet? How can you keep quiet? How can you do this? And uh, she had just a weak smile and uh, I still remember that how she used to get battered and then change her sari and then go to college and teach and come. I remember the days when the college, since the college was one of the top colleges, I mean the top uh, bureaucracy, bureaucrats, children used to study there and they used to visit home to say thanks for her influence on their kids. And afterwards, after they go, she used to get battered. And, uh, but continuously she showed love to my dad. Continuously she was patient to my dad. Continuously she used to pray for my dad that when I was in fourth and fifth I used to got wild at everything. Who is this God and what is this and why she should be patient and all. Then finally she is on the fourth standard, fifth standard itself she used to share that what God is, that how he went to the cross and how he was so patient and bearing that we have a message to the dad. At that time I used to think this message I don't want to give to my dad. Uh, abusive person who wants to tell that uh, that uh, we need to consistently continuously forgive my daughter. But then life went on like that. She got afflicted with the uh, tumor. Maybe because of the continuous stress she faced uh, all her lives. Uh, I couldn't uh, say it in words. That How old was she? Sorry. When she passed away? And when she had the sickness? Uh, uh, around 43. Around yeah. 43. She had just finished her doctorate and she gave the thesis to you and all. Nobody, came. my dad didn't allow anyone to look after her or come. So what could have been seen at the initial stage was allowed to grow to the worst side. And uh, she came to the, when finally some of the friends uh, came 
and uh, took her to the hospital. My dad used to say that she should go to even to the uh, church on a Sunday and she won't go to her because she said the Bible says only your husband. So she used to kneel almost the entire Sunday and pray and then go. There was, uh, there was not even that freedom. And to make things very worse, she was a person, she lost her mom when she was uh, three years old. And uh, her dad was broken because of her condition. And that was also weighing on her. But uh, with all this strain and stress, she was the real, real lily. Okay. She was a lily not to the outside world, but to us also. To us also. And uh, when the tumor came and the doctor said it was malignant and she had got uh, no years to live, she, I remember she prayed and said, God, now show your power and show that you are a living God to my kids. They are both small. And How was, old were you then at the time? Uh, I was in my 12th standard on my first year of college okay. and she got, uh, and she got afflicted. With, uh, you were the oldest son? I was the oldest and I had a younger brother who was uh, somewhere around 9th uh, okay. at, uh, at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just saw it in real how the power of God came upon her and even though she went through six or seven rounds of chemo, none of the hair fell. None of the hair fell and she recovered and she went back to the college to even teach. And uh, what was the fourth stage of malignancy of those days? Uh, uh, I mean, 84 and 83, the treatment also wasn't so advanced as it is now. So, uh, so first day they said they just simply wrote her off, but she just uh, recovered and we just saw it with our own eyes that she went to the college, she began to even put on weight, her uh, cheeks came back and everybody used to praise God. And then one day, you know, it's very crude and just sharing because uh, Ultimately, what God could do in a person's life. Uh, my, my dad just came home drunk and picked her up and threw her out of the home. I just uh, I had a walk and I saw my mom who was holding such a high portion, I mean, such a respect in the society, walking without even a silver on the road. She came and I took her back to home and uh, my mom counseled me not to react against my dad. Out of honor and out of obedience to her, I didn't react. And but then finally took the toll on her and the uh, disease relapsed. Okay. Uh, it relapsed and this time we came back with the vengeance. Mm -hmm. And uh, everyone said uh, that she's suffering and she had to be taken to the hospital for the drips to be given so that uh, even if it's going to be the end, it will be very easy for her. But my dad said, no, no one is touching her. Let her be like that. Uh, and all. and uh, my mom patiently accepted that. Patiently accepted that she was there, she was in a deathbed. I could, I could just see it with my eyes. Literally, I could see that my dad literally murdered her. This is what we asked my men. At the time, I vividly remember one incident, you know. One of our close friend and colleague and a very strong believer came and I uh, prayed for her and told uh, Lily, uh, you are coming to the end. I know your husband, I, I know your husband, you know your husband. We know that you have got two kids, and no one will look after her, look after them. Be wise and write all the money that you may get up to your end to the kids so that uh, at least they will take care of them. I could, I, I was, I, we were witness to that uh, and I was excited because I didn't expect, I, deep inside I was sure that the mom would die but the money would come I thought as a small boy. So I thought I'd have the best of both the worlds. I have my mom and also the money. So at the time I was in second year college, I wanted to have a bike and also I thought, okay, everything is coming, falling in place. And then I thought, um, but my mom uh, said, uh, if at all something is going to happen to me, I want to leave my sons at the master's hands. I just don't want them to depend on this small money. Whatever the money could be high, I just don't want to. I know my maker and I know he will take out my sons. Our friend was disappointed, I was disappointed. And it went. Finally she passed away. She passed away. And as everyone thought, my dad forsook us. He went into still bad habits. And then after I finished college, he just told me that he can't help me anymore. And he said, uh, you just take up a job in the village here. 
I mean, I just tried to make reasonable things that I have studied this much and doesn't matter. He just took all my clothes and things in a suitcase and said, get out. You have got nothing to do. At the time, uh, I could see a real presence coming upon my mind. Somebody comforting me. And then, what I then saw, what my mother uh, told her at her deathbed, that her decision to leave us at the hands of the master coming into effect, yes. coming into force. Mm -hmm. And that was just amazingly real. No, left in the lurch, I was just in the village crying like a three-year-old or a four-year-old because my dad there was very particular, no one else intervenes. They just stayed like that and everybody just mind your business. Nobody just come into our lives and all. So it was a life of great emotional, physical abuse even for us till the age of 22. I remember even at the age of 18 I used to be bashed up by my dad left, right and center. But when I wanted to react and this and that, the prayer, the, the prayer of my mom and the decision to leave us at his hands was just coming in between. I could even see somebody really physically in between. I wanted him to punch if someone was really coming in between. But that I could see because uh, my dad, this could be the physical uh, difference and there could be also someone coming in uh, preventing me, no, go, don't go into a physical fight. I am here. I am here. And this thing, I mean, um, uh, it just came to real effect in the sense that I was a very average kid in school and college. And I finished my five years of college life with no interest in that particular uh, subject I had taken. I just went through because I had to finish college I studied. Then one of my uh, aunt uh, and my grandma asked me to, uh, just told me that your dad is like that, you cannot do it. Just be in the village, prepare for the government examination and make an attempt. And when I looked at the statistics, uh, I saw there are some 24 or 25 posts available for any government post and 4 lakhs to 5 lakh people writing and then using all sort of, uh, I mean, push and recommendations and this and that. Even in the uh, proper way also, the connected people can put in a word. And uh, not necessarily you have to go through that uh, under the table or graph method, but even well connected, well healed people can could get the things done. Whereas I am just in a simple village and uh, where I am, where can I match myself against 4 lakh with 24 uh, people, the, the arithmetic simply doesn't match at all. At that time, I am still amazed uh, in the sense that there uh, some presence came upon me and I began to love to study. The thing that was missing in my life from my LKG till my five years of college life was studying. Because of the turbulent situation at home, it's not conducive. Yeah. And uh, the concentration was concentrate, not there, yeah. the love of books was not there. Yeah. Because your mother's, uh, exactly. what she was going through affected yeah. you at all. Post, uh, post my mom's life also was not terrible very for, smooth, yes. was so, terrible for us. So you were able to study at that time. Suddenly a deep love for studies came in. And uh, it, it is deteriorating with every pa passing year. Now I am in a still greater problem. Mm. I have not finished my college. My, I have no hope of my uh, future. And I have nobody to bank upon, fall upon. And even though we were a close-knit family, because of my dad, no one was able to uh, mm -hmm. really close. come close, come close and relate to us and yes. even call home. Mm -hmm. And I am not a big uh, study buff or uh, anything to just uh, look at my books and uh, give an effort. I know what my knowledge in my major study was there. And in a situation like that, suddenly you developed a great uh, supernatural, that's the word. Think, supernatural uh, ability to, to sit and study, mm -hmm. which just came from the blue. Mm -hmm. uh, when my mom used to be there, uh, she used to just sit like this and uh, to study for 45 to 50 minutes used to be like 50 hours <laughs> for both <laughs> me as well as for my mom. <laughs> At the end of it, we both also became very tired and worn out because it's 50 hours of uh, effort uh, allegedly reduced to 50 minutes. You know? yes, yes. <laughs> so uh, that used to be my love for uh, study. But here, literally from morning 8, I take my books, it used to go till 12 in the night. And it just uh, go like 5 minutes. 
So compare it to like what I said, to study 50 minutes or 50 hours, yet literally I am studying for 50 hours or something, in 5 minutes. Right, but so not in feeling it, not in you are enjoying it. Enjoying yes, it. you are changing your situation. Yeah. Yes. I was just, I was pinching myself really <laughs> to know whether I am the real one. Mm -hmm. I am the real one, how on earth I could study like this, suddenly there is an interest for history, interest for geography, interest for my physics which I hated like anything. <laughs> Five years of hate of physics just vanished like anything, I wanted Amazing. to know what is the law of this, that, what is here, Newton said, what did he say? <laughs> Everything coming in. Yeah, everything you studied, you could understand. Exactly, and, yeah. I could understand. And even then, after I, I, I strongly remember after after two weeks, uh, I was sure I would have forgotten everything. Because that's the way I lived, you know, 23 years and around 21 years. Uh, so I was sure, and I, I was so surprised I had not forgotten anything. Then to I just like a rascal, I even tried to forget, you know, <laughs> because I'm used to that and. How come uh, 10 days of massive study like from 8 o'clock to 12 o'clock, 10 days, uh, I mean, I'm just taking a stock, you know, and I'm not forgotten. I'm not forgotten. I mean, something was uh, used to wake me up and uh, this and that, that uh, just in the village, next uh, uh, four rooms, and my dad used to be drunk and be uh, like a village belly and this and that. Something was saying, just forget that. Come on, come on, your books are there. Come on, go up, study. And you feel it was God was helping. The presence of God yes. was, uh, I mean, amazingly real. I began to study, study, and you know, I then somebody I went to Coimbatore to for, to help uh, to help someone, and there just in the opposite to the hotel, I just saw. There's, you know, this small shop, uh, uh, this Panwala, this uh, small uh, shop there, and a uh, hanging that said uh, um, uh, vacancies available in income tax, direct record things, what do they say? I asked how much this uh, application cost, and I bought it two rupees. He said, okay, whatever two rupees, what is there? I bought it, put it there, mm -hmm. and went home, and then I just applied it and uh, said that. And that was the, the first, after, after preparing, that was the first uh, shot I took at the competitive exam. Okay. Then I went to Madurai and then I wrote that. I wrote that and came and then subsequently I began to prepare harder and harder and harder and then began to write a lot of other exams. Mm -hmm. One and a half years afterwards, uh, the results came, I got selected in the interview. I was just couldn't believe that how I could uh, get selected in the interview. Yes. Just couldn't believe. Uh, and uh, after living, uh, after just, and then I came to Chennai for the interview. Mm -hmm. I was feeling so lonely in the sense that just two days before the interview, only my my dad didn't, was not even speaking to me for the last uh, one and a half years when I was going through this turmoil of preparing. He said, where are you going? And I just went and told him that I got selected. And I go, so where are you going? So, then I uh, had no money, so I asked my father if he could give me some money to buy a shoe and a, yeah, a sure. new shirt and a yeah. pant. Yes, you need to go for the interview. Yeah. Yeah. So then for that he came. So I came and uh, I took my cousin in Chennai. I went to Mount Road Vata and then I bought the shoe for the next day's interview. I was remembering the life I left when my mom was a professor and reduced to such an extent. But then something was saying, uh, you know, why are you uh, like that? You know? But the, the innate flesh will not allow you. Yes. It will not allow you. It said, no, no, you are suffering. You, why are you forgetting that? Please remember that something was also not helping. <laughs> yeah? So still, I uh, just went and, and, then, and I was just there in the interview like this in a place. And I had the general knowledge book and I was just reading it, uh, you know, the tension. Because then, uh, to make matters worse, uh, four days back, uh, I just read in the paper that four lakhs have uh, written for this income tax inspector. And uh, there were 24 vacancies. So they have they are selected 24 into 3. That is 72. Uh, 72 will be selected. But 4 lakh people are Out selected. of 4 lakh, 72 are not selected for okay. interview. Okay. One is to 3. Okay. Now you have to elbow out 2 people okay. in the interview. Yeah. For one post, three people will be interviewed. Okay. So for 24 posts, around 72 will be interviewed. Mm -hmm. You have to uh, check out 48 people have to move on. Mm -hmm. to, uh, you have to beat them in the interview. Mm -hmm. So that was trying to oppress me. And there also I could see the sense of God. Mm -hmm. 
forget the uh, numbers, go step by step. Mm. Something was encouraging me, you know, that said uh, it could be a five-story building, but you can take one step at a time. And it's only a period of time when you reach that five story. And something was telling me, don't try to reach that fifth story in a second, in a jiffy. Then at the end you may lose your knee or your, your leg and you may get frustrated, worn out, everything. Mm -hmm. But you take one step at a time, on the point of time, you will reach the fifth story. Okay. The story, the, the place, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So go by one at a time. So that thing, I have never felt this type of a calmness and this type of, a, what to say, your matured uh, thought, you know. I have heard it, I have just seen some big philosophers saying and they, they themselves committing suicide later. <laughs> and you're talking that you take step at a time, they're not really happening in the And they get dissolution. And then you see you know, somebody yeah. running away like this yeah, and yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but somebody you know, telling me and uh, encouraging me to do like that, I was calm, you know. Then I went into the interview. I definitely believe that uh, 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 the Lord was overshadowing your life. Exactly. You know, yes, because that, he says, when you were in your mother's womb, womb I chose, I I chose so I knew you. And so even so when the bones were uh, born, uh, yes. I had a yeah, yeah. So he was overshadowing yeah, your life. Did. And being the father for you, he was counseling yeah. you. And, yeah. uh, I think and also the Lord honored my mom's uh, prayer. prayer. Decision. Yeah, I mean, yes. The greatest treasure somebody could live to live for their yes. kids is them the kids. Lead Jesus. Lead them with Jesus, exactly. Yes. Lead them with Jesus yes. and lead them in His. Uh, I mean, in his uh, presence. Yeah, it is. And uh, the, even in my job, the postings, everything was taken care of. How many years you've been working as an income tax officer now? Uh, I got promoted in 2001. Okay, but overall, how many years now? Uh, I joined in 92. So around uh, 21 years I put in the okay. service. Yes. Uh, and uh, I'm uh, likely to get elevated this year to my next post. Okay. And uh, I, I, so for the 21 years I've been here, I have no godfathers in the department, mm -hmm. but all my postings, I could see there was a godfather. Mm -hmm. There was a godfather. I I wanted to go to Thinner Valley when my wife, uh, I mean, when she was caring for the first time, mm -hmm. it uh, developed into a ectopic uh, the tubal pregnancy. Mm -hmm. It was operated upon. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, since I had no mom or no sister, I thought I'll go to my native Tunnel Valley mm -hmm. so that it would be of some help to her. Uh, Working in an in income tax department, it has its challenges. So how, as a child of God, you were able to handle your job? I mean, when I first joined this office, uh, after four or five years, uh, and then I, when I got promoted, I began to know what's happening in the department and I became an officer after eight years of uh, service. I initially first thought, God, you're putting me in a thoroughly wrong place. In the sense that uh, it's what of, I mean, uh, you know, bureaucracy, you know, government officers, and we know the values, the ethical values, the, the, the uh, people hold on. Even though it's a public department, you are here to serve the public. I found it was, uh, it wasn't the main focus mm -hmm. there and the temptation was also very huge, you know, mm -hmm. because I was also, I had also suffered a lot in my life financially mm -hmm. and uh, you now to be in a place where you see someone enjoying all the comforts in life. Which, every, which anyone uh, normally aspire, like a big house or a mm -hmm. big vehicle, mm -hmm. it's all, all over the world. Yeah. And for you, I mean, uh, you, I mean, a couple of lakhs is not a matter mm -hmm. at all. It's as good as some ten books mm -hmm. and all. So uh, it was a big, uh, uh, I mean, uh, temptation. Mm -hmm. or, uh, the Arju was there, mm -hmm. but as I said before, the presence was not uh, was uh, not left me there also. He just kept on telling me that these are all temporal and these are not what is uh, due for you. What is due for you, I have already given. Mm -hmm. So just not, just don't try to think beyond what is uh, due for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, deeply inside, I was satisfied with that. The presence of God satisfied me in my deeper in my being yes. that I did not want to yield uh, to that and get uh, yes. satisfied. So this makes me to, I mean, really understand 
that the inner being can only be satisfied by our maker yes. not by something very temporal or uh, uh, i mean uh, things which may i mean temporarily give you some thing uh, which may in a given circumstances may easily come to you yes. you may be in a circumstances where you can suck that in even though yeah. that's not legitimately due to you yeah. Uh, yeah. so you can uh, i mean you are in a place where you can even easily suck or you can give some excuses or they say no or something flows through you or some if you think it can get stuck and you can scratch it yeah. and then you can say it's yours or something <laughs> what are excuses you may say or what are you may say uh, you wanted to do the things the right way because right, of yeah, because because your deep, yeah mm-hmm. i wasn't longing for that, that yes. okay. I, there was no longing for that mm-hmm. you were satisfied by god i was i felt very sad is when even the initial years of our married life is sort of like uh-huh. anything we lived in a home where nobody should live okay. i i sincerely okay. believe that yeah. and even though the rent was small to pay that was uh, every day was a big uh, every month was a big struggle yes. so that will have been a contrast uh, in the sense when you're going through such a struggle exactly. and you see some easy way of trying to you know exactly it was a big struggle and i had a bike that will uh, only start on a day on its own <laughs> <laughs> okay. so to think it says say, so god is the day for me but let us think if it starts i'm happy and go back i raise it i i i couldn't even change that okay. but now but in, amid all that i really to be very frank and uh, so i have to be truthful i myself was uh, surprised that uh, how am i still feeling satisfied yes that uh, the the desire towards that was uh, not at all yeah, coming yes. again i would only say to the values what my mom had taught us right from our small age mm-hmm. that just got ingrained mm-hmm. they just didn't uh, i mean just she taught it from the bible from the bible yeah, and the yeah. values yeah. and the importance of living to the word of god yes and to the presence of god and to fear god mm. she just ingrained it in onto our into my brain in a such a simple way that we should i should fear god yes. i should have and she lived it out yes. because when i could see her because, uh, that i mean saw the something she could just still talk to my dad yes and uh, smile at him give him food and i i never seen her show her face even once You know, I longed for that that she should show her face to my dad. But that's a great grace of God. Great grace of God. I mean, He gave her the strength I mean, to bear it. By grace of God, you will not remember. You will not even. Uh, I mean, uh, um, if I say this, uh, many people may not even believe this. That uh, when I passed away in '85 and around 20 years, uh, I still cry like a small boy when I still remember. Uh, my on the way my wife got surprised by right? crying like some my little daughter we were so as i was uh, the impact on you was so i said you so know because i could see that in spite of the suffering she would live it out mm-hmm. so i know what is to have uh, fear god no yes. so that was uh, that was helping me in my that was a strong foundation for your decisions for exactly, life exactly yes. exactly the foundation that actually that spiritual upbringing yeah. bringing up the children in the ways of god yeah, lord exactly and the fear of the lord you know it is not only the beginning of knowledge mm-hmm. it's the beginning of all blessings i could say mm-hmm. it is it has opened up for everything you know i really praise god because god finally honored and opened the way and god uh, Uh, gave my wife a good job, and yes. uh, my wife got a lot of posting in the U.S. Yes. And she went to the U.S. When she went to the U.S., then, then financially we began to feel a little yes. bit uh, easy, yes. and then God began to open up uh, those yes. doors. But we we had to walk through that path, and I thank God for His immense grace yes. and strength that allowed me not to compromise, not to, to do anything against Him, yes. not to, exactly to compromise or to do anything, anything against Him. That was the uh, that's a great uh, grace, uh, uh, grace of God. <laughs> Brother, in the, your life, you have uh, priorities. You have uh, a limited amount of time at your disposal. How do you spend your time? Do you spend it on your hobbies? Do you spend it on your? Uh, uh, how do you choose to spend your life? each of us uh, have uh, different ways of doing it how do you spend uh, your life exactly as 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 i chart my life you know uh, all this time i know the path i walked 
and the path I have come through is only because by the immense grace of God. So deeply inside I decided, priority number one, God, I will give you back. Okay. I should give you back. Okay. I should give you back because the path I have come through and the position I have been here is because of the loving mercy and the kindness and the blessing of God has been back. So as you asked the question, I decided in my young age, young age in the sense of the moment uh, uh, 27 or 26, 27, I decided, Lord, I want to serve you back. I am here because so many people prayed for me. The church prayed for me when I was a young kid. The pastor was so kind to me. I remember uh, when I was in hostel, even one uh, Sunday if I don't uh, attend the pastor's uh, the auntie, the wife, she used to come. She used to be a tall lady. And I used to, I used to make uh, call my brother and mock her, saying the Janaki might be there outside. <laughs> and, uh, because uh, she was so tall, I mean, unusually tall, more than six five or something. Oh, and even some, to be honest, some shorts. She would have died even behind a uh, normal shorts, you know. Uh, like that, she used to be there. But she would just come. So I. I mean, I I come to this level because so many people had showed uh, responsibility in my life, and I just now don't didn't want to know a uh, little tough because uh, in me it's your job you took care of me you now uh, for that you like that I didn't want to take it up. So there was a sense of uh, gratefulness or whatever. Yes, acknowledgement. Acknowledgement. Yes, that's yes, the right word. That's acknowledgement. Yes. There was an acknowledgement in my life. So priority, I said, Lord, I want to give it to you back. Whatever be my time and whatever you want me to do, I will do, uh, do it. That decision I took, uh, even when I was uh, uh, going through certain troubles, the moment I took uh, the job and I settled down and I got married, that was our, I decided it was my first priority. Yes. So, uh, 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 what did that lead you to uh, do? Yeah. You said you wanted to do something for God, yeah. so how did you do that? So initially one or two years, uh, uh, I was just, we were just praying and trying to help the pastor in my church in some small way, this and that. Um, uh, I mean, I, I remember once the pastor asked if he could take the offering and the yes, You know that uh, the thing you have a job and you have some uh, inspector or uh, this and <laughs> that. The thing, the thing really came, let me also be frank, you know. But then suddenly it also struck me. I, if God is going to ask me what I am to do, so only year I just did that. Like they did when went there. Oh, in the church to take off. Yeah. The AD church. Yeah. So I was just doing that. Then one day as I, as we were, as I was praying in my limited ways, I was also growing in the Lord because after years of abuse and suffering, I am just coming out. So my prayer life was also a little bit slow, but this priority was in my, was in my back of my head. Even though I would have fallen a thousand times per day, uh, every day also I might have fallen in this or that, in these things or that things. But uh, the priority was there. At that time, uh, one of my cousins just came and um, uh, told me you are running here and there. I was trying to help a few secular NGOs also. Mm -hmm. So my cousin just came and told me that you are running here and there. She was in the mission in the hospital in Motin Jantaram. That there is an organization called uh, Missionary of Holders Trust. Mm -hmm. And why don't you give your uh, time to it, she just said. So I just, uh, there was a number, I just called uh, the local person here. Mm -hmm. and the local person said you can come home and uh, discuss and they said, uh, you want you can pay some hundred rupees and become a handle number or something, we'll give you something. So I just said, okay, hundred dollars was there, I just gave it off. And then one day he called up and said, we have a missionary dedication and in a place where don't you come? Something said I should go there. So I just went there. So as I was there, I happened to meet one person by name, Mr. J.J. Rathur Kumar. Mm -hmm. I think he had also come yes, here. Yes, he was there. Yeah, so he just spoke with me and met with me and talked with me. As I was <laughs> talking with him, you know, I got a little bit scared. Mm -hmm. Yes, he was only talking about uh, the godly things and sitting on the of the world <laughs> and all. But well, as I was somewhere there, but now I got my wife working, uh, working very well, and at the time, software was the 
was the sector yeah. any town became very even uh, yeah. uh, well educated low educated or not educated were all in that sector yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. everybody wanted to have their hand in that uh, yes. big pipe you know yeah. so something everybody were, were doing that and she was professionally qualified and she is inside so i thought uh, i know most the time for me to make up for some of the last time you know that's the mind uh, thing i am beginning to forget for a moment i forgot what and all god has done for me and i decided uh, maybe god has uh, provided for me to have taste of that also mm -hmm. why can why can't i take it like that way i have some teaching also somewhere here or there so i said uh, maybe this is the teaching god wants to give me that also so i decided at the time he was a big contradiction in my life, Mr. Jaijinathan, he is saying that I have a, I have a behind a good job, and there is a call of Lord, and people are giving themselves up, and uh, we need to take care, and how much time we can give? It's okay. uh, not okay. Some uh, prayer meetings, I say, uh, praise God and Amen, and maybe a few boxes, something and go. But giving life. on a sustained basis okay. somebody i am mean, scaling down their comforts okay. it was a big uh, uh, no, no, like it was a big no, no, no. and make things worse you know at the time when i met him somewhere in the early 90s um, if you might remember uh, there was a guy called ashwin mehta the stock market yes yes, yes. and because of him Uh, everybody took a fancy to stock market mm -hmm. the market was heated up mm -hmm. people putting 100 rupees are making 10000 Uh, 10,000 at a particular time. Really, mm -hmm. so, um, um, uh, it was uh, heated up like that. He was a big cook playing in that. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, um, uh, but That's no one knew. No one yeah. knew. See, the, the, the index what was? Nobody knew what was a stock exchange itself. Yeah. People even believed that stock exchange itself was not a world at that time. But suddenly it became famous. Everybody wanted to attend some course. Even I took one course. Okay. One of those courses okay. to try to understand how to make money in the <laughs> stock market. Because you know. Okay. like uh, it was making so we were asking today how was the sensex it was count in 9000 10000 this group there it was all big money and this uh, and that thing yeah. why is this he uh, was uh, saying and all that so then i thought okay let me stop the conversation with him but sometimes uh, but uh, i couldn't stop he was also not stopping i was also not able to break away from it it went on uh, went on then i went home um, i went home And uh, in a um, uh, couple of uh, days, uh, my wife got posted to the US, and she also uh, went to the US. So we, had, by the time we had bought one small flat also, so my own flat, uh, wife in the US. So these are like half a dozen. So you can tell, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I need it. Yes, yeah. And compared to the past, the past, I am very old. Something uh, big, uh, yeah. luxury. Yeah. I am a luxury state. Yeah. 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 So uh, I was just uh, like that. At the time, my phone rang and he was on the line. Okay. Uh, he was on the line. And I got a big shock and a big irritation also to be very frank. Okay. <laughs> he said there's a prayer meeting going up. Okay. Uh, I, I attended the prayer meeting last week. Now how can you call me the next week? So <laughs> next week it's a how can you call me? I just uh, told him. But he said, no, no, you come and this and that. Some half an hour, uh, he just uh, he was not putting up the phone down. He said, then uh, he just said, you know, I don't mind. Uh, he even spoke a little bit rudely, so that he put the phone down, but it wasn't happening. <laughs> and all, uh, and, uh, he was very persevering. Yeah, he was very persevering. <laughs> and now it went like that. No, I was uh, just I uh, I don't exactly remember whether I attended that meeting or not. Just went away. Then I was driving back one day. I could sense uh, something. Uh, Coming upon me to say it, that uh, how much I have loved you, and how much the kingdom has blessed you. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? It, it, something uh, I could uh, sense that. that oh, what's this? And everything. I just uh, left it. Then I, when I was uh, reading the Word of God, I think Second Corinthians uh, 16 and 16. Well, they said the household of uh, Stephen they gave themselves to the service of the saints. Well, he is saying some service to the mission workers, uh, and here is the Bible is saying there was one household that has given themselves. And well, I think I'm thoroughly on the wrong footing and uh, getting a foot into people into some place. So I just uh, got, it was a uh, to be very frank. Uh, 
you weren't very open about it. I wasn't open. I thought the Bible would say that I'm going to make you a king or a... Bless you for the patience. That's the word of God or anything, something. So there is one man is just talking to me like a... Uh, like a hound or something. <laughs> and the Lord is God, God is also pointing me out to somewhere on the uh, yeah. same place, you know, and the household of the entire family has given themselves to the service. And all uh, the coming days he was repeatedly calling me. Mm -hmm. And uh, then finally I, I also uh, uh, it wasn't over deep he said I felt the presence of God saying that it would please him if I if, if you I, say uh, yes if I, if I be obedient to him. Okay. I really being obedient to a uh, I mean to a third party. It's not I'm not related to him in any way. In any way, either village or if you look at the local uh, catalogs uh, method. Mm -hmm. Anyway, if at all I get related to him, it can only be the spirit. Spirit, blood of Jesus. Yeah, exactly. And the gift of God. Yeah. But the presence of God wanted mm -hmm. to push me towards that. But I yielded, ultimately I yielded. Mm -hmm. I began to, whatever he says, I began to uh, accept and try to, mm -hmm. I mean, try to assist him in that work, assist him in that work. La first two, two, three years, my major work only was to drain him around the city mm -hmm. and drop him in Kohen and and go home. Mm -hmm. So that only I was doing for the last two, three years. He talked with me a lot. Thinking back, after my mom's life, his entry into my life has been was the greatest blessing. Yes, praise God. Was the greatest blessing. Yes. JJ, my uh, interaction with JJ and his association in my life, I would say, has played the blessing of the uh, Lord more into my life. Yes. We could sense it. We could sense it in real terms. Mm -hmm. And I began to, I mean, I remember even my wife sometimes if I say something wrong or anything, she will say, tell Rathopman. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> because she, she knew. He was almost like a spiritual father. She knew that uh, I don't like to cut up a song here. Uh, 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 before, that was the uh, influence. And he didn't bring anything secular into our life. Yes. Yes. No, for the outside man, you know, yes. I, uh, for him to have an influence, maybe he's a big shot in the secular world where he could uh, get me posting or he can get me a, a big chunk of land in the, in the city. It's nothing on that side. It is more into giving yourself up more and more, more and more and giving to I think he not only shared his vision with you, he helped you to also identify that vision where exactly, you know, exactly. that you could work together. Exactly. And, and he was only pushing me on the uh, on the kingdom uh, values uh -huh. and not on uh, any other yeah, thing. Sure. But he's uh, pushing me into the kingdom thing and me or God's grace enabling me to understand and accept that. And acknowledge his pushing, I think it supplemented. Mm. And I think my mom's prayer and this thing and JJ's uh, mm. influence in our life was uh, was awesome. Great. I would say it, yes. it was really awesome. It opened up a lot of things in our lives, you know. I mean, I think now, uh, even in our current life, we could see that. Praise God. You uh, had mentioned uh, that uh, sister had undergone an ectopic pregnancy. Does that mean that uh, uh, it becomes difficult for uh, such a person to conceive, conceive again. And also, we have also, uh, yeah, and, true. Yeah, it mm -hmm. becomes difficult to conceive again. And uh, uh, how you you uh, been happen to know that you have a daughter, could you tell us something about how you came Yeah, how she came into your life. Right decisions yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. you took. Because she's a gift of God yeah. Yeah. for you both. No, oh, for one, I think we, we uh, after three years of married life, she first conceived, and we were very happy for the for the touch of God in our life, you know, at that moment in year five. But uh, three weeks down the line, the doctor gave us the biggest shot to say that the heartbeat uh, is in the, the fetal yes. heartbeat or something. They said I could yes. remember a while back, and they said that it hasn't positioned itself properly in the womb. It's in the uh, um, uh, tubular or something, and they said that she has to uh, undergo a, a, a operation. It was very really disappointing at that point of time 
but we and uh, but the grace of God sustained us. She went through that operation, and even though the doctor said that uh, uh, it will take some time for her to recover, the grace of God we could see that she recovered quite uh, yeah, quickly, yeah. and she got a job, and she also came to the sector also uh, into the job sector also. Then we were there and we were very busy in our lives because our work was also tough and I was also in the uh, intelligence wing at that time so uh, it was a very hurried life at that time and we were just going through it. So, uh, I mean we are into giving kids in adoption and all this they said. So they got a real surprise. We are talking about this and I am getting connected to someone who are into this. You know. Then I left it again and they came home and didn't turn my mind. And then I am... Uh, since they could converse in English, I, uh, I invited them home for a dinner. Any people, since both of us don't know Hindi, mm -hmm. anyone who could converse in Tamil or English, we invite them for a meal. Okay. As a, I mean, uh, as a guest too, so that uh, they could come and we could spend some time like that. Then they came home and while talking, they said a uh, um, uh, lot of things uh, about uh, small kids being up and down, coming home and how they find uh, good Christian homes and how they grow up, not knowing that we are also, somebody has uh, provoked us to think mm -hmm. and uh, we are just uh, unsure about uh, what decision to take, they came and shared about it. Then they went home. Then after they went home, uh, my wife said, uh, they are saying so many things, uh, but uh, how can we, how can we also adopt like that, she casually said. I just said, how can we adopt? No, no. Then the conversation went and she said, we can also adopt, she said. She had said, why can't we adopt, began the question. Oh, and uh, then I um, asked her, no, what's your opinion? She said, no, a long back I thought we should only adopt. And the thought came when the missionary doctor raised this subject. It said the thought had come into our heart. But since I didn't... Uh, broach the topic? Even uh, though the mission, the mission doctor asked me to broach the talk immediately, I didn't. Because I thought uh, we were bringing up for her family situations and her thought process will uh, uh, will stop it. No way of talking. But uh, something... God has already started preparing her heart. Uh, and she thought, my thought process, my upbringing will uh, stop this. Uh, so both of us thought like that. And both of, the, both of us then thought the better way is not to open the home. Okay. <laughs> and uh, allowed it to hide it. So one year both of us uh, fully deciding on the wrong way that the other one will never be interested in me. Deciding that she will never uh, accept that. She deciding that I will never accept that. He kept on. Finally God had to make someone to visit Butter's uh, house and in turn bring home for the dinner to, to I mean, up the furnace uh, in this. and. Uh, take the conversation to the next level. And then uh, I discussed with my pastor, uh, Reverend Abraham Thomas, and he was, he was very encouraging. Okay. And uh, he was forthcoming and he said, uh, it's a will of, uh, it could be a will of God. Mm -hmm. God has placed it in both your hearts. Yes. And it's a great, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, decision. It's not an easy decision. If both of you are agreeing, it should be the presence of God. He said, and he encouraged us too. And I spoke to JJ and he encouraged me like anything. He said, this is what every Christian home has to do. Mm -hmm. This is what every Christian home, open up your homes for someone to know the gospel, yes. to someone to know it. That's all theoretical. Now it's a great opportunity for you to open up home, yes. he said. And he gave us, he gave a very flattering recommendation about us to the Pandita Ramavai Mukti Mission. The pastor also gave a very good account of us. So I think once you knew that Pastor Thomas and uh, Ratna Kumar Anand were uh, open, you just went ahead. Yeah, we and just, uh, we, um, we, we then, uh, after our conversation... Then you said that God said, is guiding you in this direction. Yeah, the, the fact that when mm. we both came to know that both of us have but in our heart... Have decided, yes. ...desire to bring without on a consulting duty, each other. ...without consulting each other, but took the wrong opinion of the other. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, opinion of the other, not able to break in. I think the Lord then thought that it could be a genuine uh, traffic jam. Uh, okay. <laughs> not jam or uh, thought jam or whatever jam it is. 
and he sent his servant in the name of that uh, Pandita Ramabai uh, worker who came home and again uh, opened up the topic for us to have a discussion on it. So anytime someone comes home, anytime they go, we talk about that person for two days. Yes. Once a Bible translator came, yeah. she said how difficult the life was as a Bible translator. Then we talked about that, whether we will be there or this and that, trying to confuse each other like that. Something like that in a, in a later week. We used to talk like that. So this person came and said, and their main focus of work is on uh, placing abundant kids in good Christian homes, yes. believer homes. That is their call. Not placing kids in a home. Yeah, yeah. Not yes. even placing home uh, kids in a Christian home. They are looking for good believer homes. Okay, prayer them up in the ways yeah. of God yeah. and teach them. So um, since they had come home and left, our discussion was centered around that. So finally, uh, the tongue had to open up, you know. And then we we discussed on that. And then to make sure we discussed subsequently with my pastor and all. But the Lord, I mean, enabled both of us to have a, a united uh, uh, stand in this. I think it started off with both of you first initially. Exactly. Exactly. And then the confirmation came yeah, and yeah. you presented it. Yeah. 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 Then we went ahead and we registered in um, uh, Panditharmo uh, uh, Murti Mission. It took a year. And then finally they said they went, uh, they said then we went there, but uh, you know, we went there, we entered into a big confusion there in the sense that we weren't there also, we weren't led to take that particular child. Something prevented us, something prevented us and we then told them that we don't appear to have a leading. And all, it was a very you know, tough decision at that time. To make, uh, to choose the child. Uh, no, no, yeah, it was, they, they just showed one, one small baby, but uh, uh, we felt uh, that uh, it wasn't the Lord's leading. Mm -hmm. um, uh, on that particular, uh, mm -hmm. uh, on that particular uh, uh, child. Mm -hmm. So then we, we came back, we came back very heartbroken, we came back, but we continued to pray. Mm -hmm. And you know what the Lord had kept was so amazing in the sense that uh, she just uh, read it in that, uh, you know, a neighborhood newspaper a time. She just talked about an orphanage uh, nearby who are, having, uh, who are placing kids. Mm -hmm. and, uh, then uh, she went and saw that place. Mm -hmm. uh, it was an uh, unbelieving place and uh, all the kids were kept in a, in a very... Yeah. In an unchristian mm -hmm. uh, atmosphere. In a, in a, uh, I mean, not secular, in a godly... In a secular atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, in, a, in a secular atmosphere. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, they were just uh, like that and she felt that uh, why not we take it there from okay. here and we approached uh, them also and they called her, they came and saw and they, when they saw that uh, uh, I am also uh, placed in a government uh, office and organization, the Lord enabled us to find favor in his eyes okay. and uh, he re suddenly that man uh, he reduced the procedure from what to from 40 days waiting to th three days. Mm -hmm. He just okay. he just uh, uh, reduced like that. I don't know how how I uh, found favor in his eyes. I just don't know. And uh, uh, then we went there. Then they show, uh, showed us uh, uh, a couple of uh, uh, children. yeah children. And we went there with prayer. And then when we when we lifted uh, the Majuma was with us in India, she was around four months. Uh, the moment uh, I lifted her, she just slept immediately. Okay. <laughs> she just uh, uh, slept immediately. Mm -hmm. Then afterwards, she just, uh, I mean, I lifted her head and was just looking at my face uh, and, and all, and both of us face mm -hmm. and all. We, she was like a bone, oh, just good. like a bone, mm -hmm. uh, maybe like, your fore, like my forehand. Very thin and small. Very thin, thoroughly forsaken, uh, health wise, emotion wise. Uh, I mean, uh, and not, since I'm holding a position in government, I was able to go into their records and look into her background. Mm -hmm. They just don't show it to. Not when I said, uh, saw that background, also I was moved. I was moved how the child had lost both her parents. And uh, how the uh, present government's, uh, I mean, scheme of uh, rescuing these kids from being uh, killed uh, and brought her to this home. Uh, you know, that created maybe scheme formed by this government. You know, to if not, she would have been killed. 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 Female okay. infanticide, you know, that she would have been uh, an easy victim uh, okay. to that. Uh, 
the, uh, the government's uh, effort to prevent that, uh, prevent that because it's a uh, that's what the, I could see it's that the uh, then Chief Minister when she started, she, she, she said it's a curse on the land okay. and she wanted to, to stop that, she started this scheme okay. and because of this so many, I mean, girl babies are escaping. Mm -hmm. So she's that one, but she was so, I mean, bruised, uh, I mean, emotionally and physically. Uh, compared to the kid, what we saw in uh, that was well taken, well taken. Uh, uh, that which was she was taken very good care of, mm. was plump and healthy, and all. Where the child is on Mukti Mission. Mukti Mission. Okay, whereas here the child here, is. Here, exactly opposite somewhere like in Somalia or something, not to very that. Very undernourished uh, child. Exactly, that's the word I wanted to say. Very malnourished and undernourished. And then, right, but with a quick eye and uh, uh, with a, what to say, with a spirit, never say spirit, I could see it, see, <laughs> see, see it not even as a four month, you know, <laughs> with, with uh, I mean, finger like a uh, hands and uh, the chest and the body, you see, little bit, maybe if I put both my hands together, so, so, uh, so thin, uh, could I, the, I will know, I will she went had to, one spirit uh, in her, that, okay. uh, spirit, uh, in her, that was just lifting her body to say, who are you, both of you who are come here. Like that, like that, uh, it was there. I could, we could uh, sense it, and the Lord uh, came to both of our hearts. I she to she, take care. She found a way into your hearts. Yeah, take <laughs> care. Again, here also the the child. What they showed in the uh, first was a normal one, okay. uh, normal one. My natural inclination was to go for that, but then we decided we'll go for this and show the love of God to. And then we decided. We said, okay, we'll take care. Then we went through the formalities. And God enabled us to quickly finish the formalities, and so that we want to make it all pakka legally also. Mm -hmm. Then uh, it was over. And then she came home mm -hmm. as a five-month-old uh, uh, baby, and in two months God enabled her to put on. And you know, when we went, took it to the pediatrician mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Sundaram Hospital, he was uh, looking at us up and down. Uh, I, I, um, uh, I was also feeling a little bit, uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> uneasy. uneasy. Why is he? Uh, uh, then I thought maybe he's doing, we're looking at both of us, the child is uh, out of sync. Like that he's looking uh, at us, I just thought. Then he said something. So I thought how the Lord uh, could help us in everything. He asked uh, whether uh, you are taken, uh, the, whether the kid was in that particular orphanage. Straight away. Straight away. Okay. I, I said yes, and we have written. How do you know? No, I am the pediatrician for this child. Oh, okay. So the kid has, uh, she had come as a two month old. Okay. And three months that uh, orphanage uh, uh, doctor was this. Uh, we didn't know that. Yes. And you had taken her to the same doctor. Okay. And, uh, so he knew everything about her. Yeah. So all the treatment, yeah, yeah. whatever he had to do. Yeah. And all, and he, he he was also so encouraged. He was also so encouraged, and we had a rap out that pediatrician, and then the Lord was with her fully. She was very weak initially. She was she had to catch infection like anything, but now the Lord has taken her out of everything. Uh, everything she is not depending on any medicine or anything. She is on her own feet, and I mean. We could see the presence of Lord upon our life. How old is she now? She's and now what is she doing? She's, uh, I mean, she has just completed her eighth year. Okay. And uh, she's now studying third standard in Spartan CPC uh, school. And uh, mm -hmm. you, how's, she's studying now? How's her studies? And I mean, God has blessed her so, so many talents, you know. And um, we were so amazed. Uh, to, even some of our close cousins once came and told us, you can show a love to a, I mean, to a first, to a first second child or to a motherless child, mm -hmm. but to take her in is a little bit too much. Take her that way, okay. <laughs> a good Christian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they said to take her in. And, uh, accept her as your own. Yeah, sir. accept her own and to say that you are going to succeed us. Mm -hmm. You are our legacy, yeah. you know, and all. Uh, but it reminds me that we are also adopted in exactly. the same way. Exactly. Yeah, and so whenever I look at her and whenever I lift her, I, I always I remember, God, I am like her in your place. Yes. That I am adopted yes. by you through Christ, you know. Yes. 
And now, God has given us so to as she grew, the talents also began to, I mean, surface that the Lord's, the, what to know, the talents the Lord has wasted. Last year, she stood first in all her exams in the school, and she got the proficiency prize. And, uh, so you are proud parents, <laughs> <laughs> and thank God for and what he has the, done. The, we have a, she's on a learning keyboard, and the master always used to say she has a fantastic voice. Oh, wonderful uh, voice! Uh, uh, fantastic voice. The only thing is she's very naughty, which she will get corrected as she okay. uh, as she grows up and all. Our prayer, me and Sumitra, our prayer is that as she grows up and comes to know of it also. Mm -hmm. She will think back and thank the grace of God. Like how I know thank yes. you. Yes. I may have a, I want to tell her sometime or I used to tell her but that I lost my mom at a critical age. But the presence of God I mean just took me took me out of all my thing, you know. And even though I had a dad, he wasn't really useful. I mean he, he wasn't he, I mean he wasn't able to do his duty much to the yes. way he would have liked to also. So, in, the, in that way, God has also, I mean, he's, he's God has picked her up and chosen yeah, her for his purpose. Exactly. I heard it somewhere uh, that uh, if you get your uh, kid, uh, you don't choose. Uh, yes. But uh, when you take a kid, you choose. Yes. So, we want to be responsible to God in that also. God, we chose this child. Yes. Help us to be very responsible to her. Show us the way that we should be more responsible than the natural ones. Yes. They may say we didn't choose. Yes. <laughs> but we chose, you know, yes, we chose. Yes. And we want her to also know her that uh, uh, at the right time and the right age that we chose you. Yes. But also we went, we flew. Uh, the, to, uh, we flew somewhere to beyond Bombay and all to search. Ultimately we were lying somewhere uh, three kilometers away. Yeah. Yeah? And we chose, we saw you and we said, okay, you come home. You come home. God has blessed us. God has given us a home. You come home and stay with us. And we want to show what the Lord has done in our lives to you also. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's such a blessing and a joy. I to know, see to see you the way you talk. And, <laughs> okay. and to grow up and you being able to also Watch show the love of God to yes. our lives. Yes. And I, I took her to my old home and said, Mahima, her name is Mahima. Why did you name her Mahima? Because she's the glory of God. God. Mahima in Tamil yes. they say, yes. no? So we want to tell her that the glory of God has uh, touched you. Yes. The glory of God has uh, touched you. And to tell her uh, that uh, this is your home, this is your home, mm -hmm. and uh, this is your car, and uh, this is and all. It's, it's all yours. God has given you. Yes. We keep on saying that. And uh, as she grew, she asked, well, God has given or you have given Jesus? Oh, so <laughs> 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 I know. Very intelligent. Yeah. Very intelligent. So, thinking back, I'm, I'm really grateful to God what He has done in my life. And it's my prayer that uh, I'll continue to be a blessing to people whom I meet, whom I know, and to the family, and to the office to which I work. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Dear people of God, you've been listening to a very challenging testimony. I would like to remind you of the Bible verse which says, All things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to His purpose. Maybe you are going through difficulty. Maybe you are saying that life has its own challenges. I would encourage you to draw comfort from the testimony that you heard and from the scripture verse which puts it all in perspective. All things can work together for good. Stay on, put your trust in God, continue to pray through and God would show himself mighty on your behalf and make the pathway that you are going through a blessing not only to you but to the world in general. God bless you. Kingdom people, ask your father to mold and bake you. As he wills, kingdom people, you are pilgrims.